Christ has risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. I hope that you manage to have a very blessed and happy Easter, even in these most unusual of circumstances. It's a day on which we proclaim that love can and does overcome all. In the face of all that would seek to deny or to destroy it, love overcomes. In the face of selfishness and of greed, of the pursuit of power, of violence and even of death, God's love overcomes all. At the heart of that love is the call on each one of us to live in that way, uh, to follow in the footsteps of the servant king. And we know that that love is not something which seeks to control or to manipulate. It's freely and unconditionally given. The beloved is free to choose whether to respond to that love or not. And we've seen so many people, haven't we, over the last few weeks and right around the world who have responded with love to the need of neighbour, even at great personal risk. I think all of us felt a sense of pride when the British Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, uh, acknowledged one of our own. As he acknowledged the whole of the National Health Service in the United Kingdom for the courage and the tenacity and the professionalism and the expertise of the individuals. Those, whether they're doctors and nurses or whether they are cleaners, those who cook the food, that all were contributing to the eventual overcoming of this virus in that country. And in the middle of that, his own illness and his own uh, journey, which depended so much on the skill of those others uh, to save his life. And in particular, he acknowledged Nurse Jenny of Invercargill. I have seen over the last few weeks uh, the work of so many individuals reaching out in quiet and sensible ways towards their neighbour. I've seen the extraordinary work of our social service agencies, the way in which uh, the most vulnerable, the homeless, those without enough food, uh, those living in bubbles where tensions have led to violence. I've seen the sacrificial way in which people have cared, gone about their business with great professionalism and love. And as we move now to the possibility of moving from level four alert uh, to levels where there will be greater freedom and possibility for social interaction, we need to make sure that our most vulnerable are not put at increased risk. There's no doubt that as we move from lockdown, and as the levels of social interaction increase, our most vulnerable become more vulnerable. As a church, we need to find a way of holding our most vulnerable within our community, uh, supporting them, caring for them, helping them not to feel excluded or isolated. We need to recognise that the elderly, those who have pre-existing conditions, are those who by virtue of race and DNA are particularly vulnerable. We must ensure that the weakest and most vulnerable amongst us have our greatest attention and care. We are a resurrection people and Alleluia is our song. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.